cut off. On the hot water side, you need to tee the vacuum breaker in on a 300 mm riser and the tee has to be a minimum of 200 millimeters away from the hot water outlet. This is a thermal insulation, which is a glass wool type material, fiberglass. It's normally used in steam plants in factories. It is water absorbent, so it needs to have a casing over the top of it. This is an insulation used by air conditioned technicians. It is very conducive to what we use in the solar water heating environment. However, it is not UV stable, so it needs to be painted if it's going to be exposed to the sun. This is another common type of insulation. It has a zip lock, so it can be installed after all the pipes have been installed and can be clipped on to the pipes. This is also not UV stable and needs to be painted if it's exposed to the sun. Remember that all pipes to and from the collector should be insulated as well as the pipes going from the geyser to the hot water taps. Here we have a 220 volt pump. Uh, it works off of a controller or a timer. It needs to be installed with a non-return valve. In this case, this is a willow pump. It's a very common pump used in South Africa currently. It needs to be installed either in a horizontal position or in a vertical position to avoid damaging the bearings. If it's in a hanging position or in a horizontal position, it tends to wear bearings. Here we have a low watt, low voltage 12 volt pump. It runs normally off of a photovoltaic cell. As you can see, this is a used one. It has only one moving part which is the impeller. It also needs to be installed with a non-return valve as per manufacturer's instructions. This pump has to be either in a horizontal position like such, in this position or hanging. It should not be in this position. If air is trapped inside this cavity over here, it creates a bubble and the impeller starts cavitating and what happens is the stainless steel rubs against the inner casing and we have a leak within no time. This is your standard 10 watt photovoltaic cell. It runs the 12 volt low watt pump. It cannot be shaded while it is running. Even if 10% of the cell is shaded, the pump will stop. This is a non-return valve, a spring type. It allows water to go in one direction, but it stops the water from going back. This helps with the pumped system. It stops the water at night from coming back and cooling off the tank. It also keeps the pump primed when the mains has been switched off. This is an air relief valve. What it does is it lets air out and losing water out of the system. Similar to a flow valve in your toilet system. The float is lighter than water but heavier than air. So what happens is the air from the system accumulates inside the little reservoir and there's enough air in it. It releases the air at the top and when the mains pressure comes up to it, it shuts the valve off the lid. On an indirect system, an expansion vessel is needed as the glycol or the antifreeze solution expands and the heat exchanger and the collector will not be able to take the pressure. There's a bladder inside of this vessel and between the vessel and the bladder we have compressed air. When the antifreeze or glycol is heated up, it expands, it gives a cushion and when it cools down at night, it's released back into the system. A tempering valve or mixing valve should be used on a system such as a thermosiphon close couple or thermosiphon system where the temperature cannot be controlled below 60 degrees. This is because we do not want to burn or scold in the showers or on the mixing components. A differential controller is an electronic device which calculates the difference in temperature between the collector and the tank or the water that's being heated. This controller has two probes, one which goes goes to the collector, the top of the collector, and another probe which goes into the tank. It calculates the difference between the two. If the difference is greater than 8 degrees Celsius, the pump will be switched on and it will pump either the water, which is if it's a direct system, or the antifreeze, if it's an indirect system, through the heat exchanger or the geyser, increasing the temperature of the water and as soon as the temperature of the water is within four degrees Celsius of the temperature of the collector, the pump will switch off. By this time, the collector will have reached a lower temperature and 
If the temperature of the water exceeds a preset limit, the pump will also switch off. This controller has more features than just a differential controlling of the collector. It also has a freeze protection, which, uh, which is needed in all direct systems. If it's a pump system, there are many types of differential controllers. Uh, this being one of many manufacturers, they all have the same basic function of controlling the temperature of the water in the geyser and as well as a freeze protection and a holiday mode. South Africa is in the southern hemisphere. For this reason, we need to face north in order to see the sun. In summer, we experience as much as 14 hours of sun each day. In winter, we can experience as little as 7 hours. The idea for the best all year round performance is to install the system for optimum winter performance. The best way to install the collector for winter would be to face the collector true north and add a tilt of the angle of latitude of the area plus 15 degrees from the horizontal. This can be as much as 49 degrees. If it is impossible to face the collector true north, it is advisable to drop the angle of the collector for better performance. This is a typical installation for a flat plate, close coupled system. In that there are two collector panels to be close coupled with a 300 litre storage tank. The storage tank is not unlike a normal electric geyser in that it has an element and a thermostat in to be used uh, when there is very little sun. During the installation, the first thing the guys do, they bring up the collector panels, they pull them up on two ladders as can be seen, They lay them on the roof and the next thing they'll be doing is bringing the tank up. Uh, I should mention at this stage that there are two types of flat plate collectors. There's a, an indirect and a direct system. This particular installation is an indirect system in that the, there is no water traveling through the collector panels whatsoever. Um, as is in a direct system, but in this particular indirect system there is a heat exchange fluid fed through the collector panels uh, which circulates by natural convection or thermosiphon and circulates around the storage cylinder holding the 300 litres of water. The guys at this stage are preparing the installation for the collector panels. Um, someone is already in the roof draining down the geysers because in this particular house there were two uh, conventional electric geysers. They have to be disconnected and drained of all water. There's the guy coming out of the roof there now. He's completed his uh, draining down of the geysers. And uh, the two geysers that were in the house are now two empty vessels in the roof, disconnected and will cause no harm to the home whatsoever. They're just empty tin cans. The guys are now laying the two collector panels. They've already secured the tank onto the roof by means of stainless steel brackets. Uh, and at the end of each stainless steel bracket, there is a, 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 an aluminium shoe which fits onto the, the rear foot of the storage cylinder. They're now connecting everything together. Everything comes with a kit whereby the interconnecting pipes, they all come in an installation kit. They make nothing on site. Um, the, the panels are covered during this operation because you don't want the heat exchange fluid um, to start heating up until they've completely installed the solar water heater. In a direct system, 
which looks exactly the same except water travels through the collector panels. Um, that can be installed in about 15% of the geog geographical area of South Africa because the reason for using an indirect where in 85% of South Africa is 